Before he left the palace, Christian was given a sword and a suit of armor to wear in case he was attacked along the way. He hadn't walked far when he saw a foul fiend flying across the field to meet him. The fiend's name was Apollyon. Christian didn't know whether to run or to stay and fight, but since he had no armor to cover his back, he decided to stand his ground. Now the fiend was hideous. He was covered with scales like a fish, and they are his pride. He had wings like a dragon, feet like a bear, out of his belly came fire and smoke, and he had long, sharp teeth like a lion. Where have you come from? Where are you going? I have come from the city of destruction, and I am going to the celestial city. I am prince of the city of destruction. Why are you running away from me? If I didn't hope to make you my servant again, I would knock you to the ground with one blow. I was indeed born in your city, but serving you was hard, and I could not live on the wages that you paid, for the wages of sin is death. You don't like my wages? All right then. If you will come back with me, I promise to give you whatever our country can afford. I have already sworn my allegiance to the Lord. I cannot go back. And besides, I like serving him. I like his wages, his servants, his rules, and his country. I am your Lord's enemy. I hate him. I hate his rules, and I hate his people. And now I am going to stop you. Be careful what you do. I am walking the king's highway, the way of holiness. Then I watched in my dream as Apollyon stood right in front of Christian. His huge body blocked the entire path. I have no fear. Prepare to die. I swear by my infernal den that you will go no further. Here I will spill your soul. As Christian drew his sword, Apollyon rushed at him, throwing darts as thick as hail. Even with his shield to protect him, Christian was immediately wounded in his head, his hand and his foot. Apollyon continued his attack, but Christian fought back with his sword as bravely as he could. The battle lasted for more than half a day until Christian was quite exhausted and very weak because of his wounds. Then, seeing that Christian was losing his strength, Apollyon moved in close, grabbed him and threw him to the ground. Christian's sword fell out of his hand. Now I have you! And the giant Apollyon began to press down on poor Christian, nearly crushing him to death. But as God would have it, just as Apollyon was about to strike the final blow, Christian reached out and grabbed his sword. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise again. Christian gave Apollyon a deadly jab, which sent him reeling backwards. Then Christian went on the attack, saying, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Apollyon spread his dragon wings and sped away. Christian never saw him again. Unless you had seen and heard this combat as I did, you could not imagine what yelling and hideous roaring Apollyon made or what sighs and groans burst forth from Christian's heart. I never saw him give so much as one happy look until he had finally wounded Apollyon with his sword. Then he smiled 
and looked up. But it was the most dreadful fight I ever saw. After the battle, Christian gave thanks to God for giving him the victory. Then there came to him a hand carrying some leaves from the tree of life. Christian put them on his wounds and was healed immediately. Then he started off again on his journey, keeping his sword drawn. For he said, I do not know what other enemies may be waiting for me, even now. As Christian continued on his journey, I saw in my dream that he came to a place called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. He had no choice but to walk through it, for the way to the celestial city led straight into the middle of it. Now this valley is a very lonely place. The prophet Jeremiah described it as a wilderness, a land of deserts and of pits, a land of drought and of the shadow of death, a land that no man except a Christian can pass through and where no man can live. This valley, as you will see, was even more terrible for Christian than his fight with Apollyon. The valley is as black as tar. From it, Christian heard a continual howling and yelling. It sounded like people in misery. Over the valley hung clouds of confusion, and death also spread his wings over it. Everything about it was dreadful and completely without order. Christian looked out towards the valley of the shadow of death. Horrible as it was, it was still his only way to heaven. As he entered the valley, there was a deep ditch on the right-hand side of the way and a bottomless swamp on the left. The way itself became very narrow so that when Christian tried not to fall into the swamp, he almost toppled over into the ditch. To make things worse, it was dark. At times it was so dark that when Christian picked up his foot, he could not see where or on what he would put it down again. And then I saw that about halfway through the valley, right alongside the way, was the mouth of hell. Out of it came flames and smoke and hideous noises. Christian's sword was of no use to him now, so he took up another weapon the weapon of all prayer. Oh Lord, I heard him cry, I beg you, deliver my soul. And all the while, the flames of hell were reaching out for him. Soon he came to a place where he heard an army of fiends rushing towards him. Now after all that he had been through, to turn and run would be more dangerous than to go forward even though the fiends were coming nearer and nearer. I will go on, I heard him cry, in the strength of the Lord God. At that the fiends stopped and wouldn't come any closer to him. Now listen closely to the next part, because of all that Christian faced in the valley of the shadow of death, this was the worst. It seems that somewhere near the mouth of hell, a wicked one had crept up softly behind him. The wicked one began to whisper in his ear and say terrible things about God. Christian was so confused that these terrible words seemed to be coming from his own mind. Just to think that he would ever even imagine such nasty things about the God he loved so much, 
it nearly broke his heart. At last the sun began to rise, and Christian sang, He has turned the shadow of death into morning. By the light of day, he could see more clearly all the things from which God had saved him. He saw the ditch and the swamp. He saw the hobgoblins and the dragons, but they were all very far off. After daybreak, they would not come near him. Then Christian said, His candle shineth on my head, and by his light I go through darkness. <laughs>